Hey there everyone, Mazarok here, and today I want to go over some Protection Warrior FAQs that I've been getting, some frequently asked questions um, about the spec itself, uh, is it, you know, all of those fun little things, and just to try and clear up some community misconceptions or things like that, because everyone's probably already seen the tier list and been like, oh, Prot Warrior's at the bottom. Well, there's some things to discuss here, and it all depends on the type of content and things that you're doing. But before we get started, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, the amount of support has been absolutely flabbergasted. If you're into tank news and then just generally being a tank nerd like I am, this is going to be a great place for you to be because that's what I cover, but I also do a lot of other fun stuff, so... There's that. I stream on Twitch. Link down below. In the community Discord, there's uh, there's a link down below for that. There's also, in the Discord itself, uh, all of my LVY profiles, weak auras, add-ons. You can get those all for free there. And as well, there's a link to the community battle net for the, uh, if you want to, you know, form some groups, ask some questions there. There's tons of different ways to get a hold of me. And those are all really, really good ways to do so. And then lastly, I have launched, relaunched my Patreon that's going to have uh, Community Guild Night, Community Feed, uh, Community Guild Night, Community Raid Night with uh, transmog competitions and uh, like, uh, trivia and prizes to be given away. There's also going to be a monthly D&D night once we get enough people signed up for it and a lot of fun stuff like that. Community feedback videos, things like that. State of the game videos where I'm going to be posting my early works on them and asking, you know, hey, what do you guys think of this and that? Where can we work together to make this communicable and, you know, sometimes comprehensible? <laughs> uh, but pretty much that's it. So uh, thank you very much, everyone, for all the support. Let's get on to the video. The first question that I get a lot with Prot Warrior is, is it any good? Well, if you look at tier lists, you would think, no, they're not. Well, that also depends on the content that you're running. It really does. If you're currently pushing 25 and above keys... Prot Warrior is not that great. Their flaws really get shown out uh, versus the other the strengths of other tanks in really high keys. But if you're just the type of person that wants to get their KSM or is after you know timing all the 20s to get all your portals, you can absolutely do so on Prot Warrior and not have a problem with it. The only problem you're going to have is you're, if you're pugging a lot, you're occasionally going to come into people that just don't want Prot Warrior because they think they're not good. That's a community problem, not a game problem. What covenant should I choose? The two better covenants for Prot Warrior, technically there's three that are actually pretty good. You can play Night Fae with Ancient Aftershock, not have a problem there. I've seen many people do it. I did it in Season 1, and it was an absolute blast. Uh, Kyrian is your current very bursty, very damage-oriented style of tank covenant choice. Uh, the Spear of Bastion gives you almost no defensives, defensive, and the, the Unity Legendary Fort gives you, like, no defensive capabilities on it either. So it is a very offensive covenant, and it's something that I run in lower keys where I'm literally not worried about having to, you know, I'm worried about dying or anything, because it's, I'm fine. Necrolord has been emerging as a serious contender for top covenant or close to, in Shadowlands 9.2.5 just because of how sturdy it is. The playstyle is a little bit more technically difficult. Uh, there's, you know, to upkeep banner, you have to manage your rage properly and know when to put your rage in shield block, which you still want 100% uptime, but also ig ignore pain. Very important to be using that, and as well as when to use revenge. But you get a very nice big strength buff as long as your banner's up, so the goal there is to upkeep your banner as much as possible, right? Making it last a minute and a half on a two-minute cooldown is something that, through a little bit of practice, I haven't been playing Prot Warrior that much lately, but I have been playing it more in the last couple of weeks because I've been falling in love with the Necrolord playstyle. And now I'm upkeeping banner, usually depending on the dungeon. Sometimes this is easier than others. For example, Miss. Uh, it's very easy for you to lose your banner in the maze, so you lose a lot of uptime there just because of, you know, the style of dungeon that it is. But in something like Sanguine Depths, it's fairly easy for me to have a very high uptime on banner because you, it's just a dungeon where you don't stop. The time between pulls is very minimal, so you can constantly be generating and burning rage to keep that banner up. So it is something to kind of look forward to and play through, but uh, Necrolord is definitely one of the more emerging... 
emerging covenant choices for prot warrior what legendary should i use basically it's reprisal um you've, you've probably seen the guide say reprisal reprisal is absolutely needed in m plus it is very strong in m plus and with a little bit of complicated technical like technical play style changes in raid is very very strong so for example to make the most to use to make the most out of it in raid what you're going to want to do is right before you know you have to taunt off heroic leap out if you can don't do this on skolex it's not exactly that's probably not good but heroic leap out and charge in and taunt keeping the boss there but giving you full access to you know a little bit more shield blo uh, more shield block and the extra rage so you're really starting off your taunt taunt off correctly and defensively when should i use spell reflect well there are some tank buster mechanics in the game that you kind of just have to know uh this is going to come through either practice or just kind of you know looking at guides and things like that on what you kind of want but uh you're gonna want to save spell reflect for example in the last boss in theater of pain mordretha you can spell reflect uh, the reaping scythe so you're going to want to save all of your spell reflects for that ability you know and, and things like that there's soul crusher in the other side uh the third boss that does the explosive wave in sanguine depths i can't remember i can never grand proctor i think her name is uh when she does that you're gonna want to do uh you're gonna want to use spell reflect for the magic damage mitigation and things like that so things to keep in mind for that now during mobs once you learn what cast are being casts that actually hurt you and can spell reflect use it on cooldown just basically you know you see something being cast hit spell reflect if it gets kicked or not if you're in a pug group if they kick it who knows it's a wild west out there when it comes to interrupts at times so that's something to stop and actually have to kind of think about but you can get through it fairly easily and fairly well um so something to think about there uh what is it so obvious and is there a list of things that are spell reflectable yes there is what i assume to be a group of people and not just a singular person that have put together a comprehensive list in shadowlands for all the dungeons and all of the raids uh the rate all of the raids being going to be a lot more relevant in season four of what's spell reflectable and what's shield blockable i'm going to put that and it's going to be right at the top uh right at the top there uh i'm putting there but it's like right at the top of the description uh this has been an absolute godsend of a source for me learning prot warrior throughout um throughout shadowlands and everything else for what to do and kind of things like that what i got to make sure to have shield block up for example uh on necrotic wake you want to save your shield blocks on the last boss for uh icy shards because that's actually not magic damage it's physical damage which you as a prot warrior get to negate that that big tank hit with shield block there's a lot of weird niche uses that prot warrior is super op on that people just don't realize or think about and just because of kind of where they are on a lot of tier lists which is kind of sad and like i said earlier if all of you're doing is 15s and 20s prot warrior is going to be a great tank for you offers a lot and everything like that another one that i get a lot is codex is the codex of the first technique any good for prot warrior that answer is sadly no and the reason why is blocking is your main form of mitigation as a prot warrior right you've got shield block uptime and things like that and your main thing is whole you know the whole thing is a warrior put up your shield and block you're not exactly a dodge dodge class like Gru, and you don't parry like bdk really as well because you don't want to stack that much crit because it's just not worth it so when it comes to how much damage you block also directly correlates to how much damage you reflect with codex for example on my blood death knight i'm reflecting about a million damage in uh 18 to 20 run right versus prot warrior is about 200k and quite literally the difference there is how the tanks are built now there's also the question of is the codex any good and should you use this above whatever that is up to you and your skill level if you feel more comfortable going into a plus 15 knowing that you're going to reflect a little bit more damage than say do a little bit do a little bit more damage and you want to play a little bit more defensively that's completely up to you whatever you feel more comfortable with as a tank 
but understand the math for uh, Codex and Prot Warrior is really against you on this one. <laughs> uh, what trinkets should I use? Now, that also depends on Covenant. If you're going with Kyrian, I would suggest offensive trinkets wherever you can. Bloodscale actually being a fairly good on-pull absorb, letting you set up, but also dealing a decent amount of damage. So that can be kind of your hybrid. But go with offensive trinkets as much as you can, because Kyrian Prot Warrior is quite literally about being on the offensive as much as possible. Because... Like I said earlier, Spear of Bastion doesn't really give you a lot of uh, a lot of defensiveness. It does help you kite, but the problem is, is your legendary gives you crit damage, uh, critical strike damage increase while you're in your spear. So you don't want to leave it because you're wasting a legendary at that point, right? And another one, oh, another question that I get get is, especially after I say Spear of Bastion offers no defensive abilities, but they say, well, you get crit, you get crit. Well, you're in your Spear of Bastion, so that's parry, right? Wrong. That's it because your parry is based on your critical strike chance. What the Spear of Bastion Legendary does is it increases your critical strike damage, being a difference between the two where the critical strike damage increase actually does not increase your parry. So that's something that uh, I think more people should know a little bit about. Um, on the thing of what trinkets are good, with Necrolord, because I love playing defensively here, and the damage is actually pretty decent with Necrolord. I just did a Theater of Pain 18 last night, where my health never dropped below 70%. I was just having an absolute blast with how it was being played. But I also did 9.8k damage in the run. Now, is that my best tank damage in a Theater of Pain? Absolutely not. But is that good? Yes, it is. If you're pulling 10k as a tank in a 15 to 18 in a pug group, you're doing you're doing things okay especially as a prot warrior who are rated fairly low on the tier list and i don't think they should be but i like playing um absorb trinkets with this run because the entire thing for me in necrolord is you're a wall of absorbs that's what you are you have ignore pain you know you have fleshcraft <clears throat> all of these things help and then i would like to run, i run blood scale and i would love a pulsating rift shard and I would also love uh, a Pocket Protoforge, which actually has a really good proc rate in Mythic Plus. Those are the two that I would like to run. But if you're playing Kyrian, more uh, offensive-minded trinkets are, are, are probably your better option, which you are going to get a lot more DPS out of, out of if that's the style that you want to play. But if you want to play that Prot Warrior Fantasy and just be an absolute brick wall, where if someone, if like, to the point where like, <clears throat> If you want to touch my health bar, you have to do like 100k damage before you can even take that off. And as you're getting through that 100k damage, I'm ignore painting throughout the entire thing as well. So you're not going to have a very, very good time with that, right? <laughs> and lastly is Outburst. When should I use my Outburst? On Thunderclap or Shield Slam? And the answer to that is always shield slam unless you have literally no other choice thunderclap is a decent threat generator so if you're losing threat shield slams on cooldown you do not have enough rage for revenge hit thunderclap use the outburst you'll get all your threat back but that is basically the only scenario in which you're going to want to hit thunderclap with outburst because the amount of rage that you generate while you hit outburst with shield slam is substantial so that's going to be one of your main kind of out of con like out of ravager out of uh out of last stand uh threat uh, rage generators so that's something you're going to have to worry about and kind of work along with but so those are some of the more frequently asked questions that i get for prot warrior i hope this video has been helpful to you uh have yourselves a good day thank you very much and uh, happy tanking